Hi there, um, my name is Miguel and I will be reading this book called The Three Questions Based on a True Story by Neo Choice Story. And it is written by John J. Muth. <clears throat> there once was a boy named Nikolai who sometimes felt uncertain about the right way to act. I want to be a good person, he told his friends, but I don't always know the best way to do that. Nikolai, Nikolai's friends understood and they wanted to help him. If only I could find the answers to my three questions, Nikolai continued, then I would always know what to do. When is the best time to do things? Who is the most important one? What is the right thing to do? Then Sonia, the heron spoke. To know the best time to do things, one must plan in advance, she said. Go, wait, go, go, the monkey who had been rooting through some leaves to find something good to eat. You will know what, you will know when to do things if you watch and pay close attention. Then pushing the dog who was just dozing off, rolled over and said, you can't pay attention to your, you, know, you can't pay attention to everything yourself. You need a pack to keep watch and help you decide when to do things for example, Gogo, a coconut is about to fall on your head. Nikonai thought for a moment. Then he asked his second question. Who is the most important one? Those who are closest to heaven, said Sonia soaking it up into the sky. Those who know how to heal the sick, go, go, stroking his boost, nodding. Those who make the rules, growled, 
question. Nick, yeah, Nick and I felt some more. Then he asked the third question. What is the right thing to do? Brian said, so yeah, having fun all the time, left, go, go, fighting, but pushing right away. Then the boy thought for a long while. He numbed his friends. He knew they were all trying their best to help him answer his questions, but the answers didn't seem quite right. Then an idea came to him. I know, he thought. I will ask Neo the turtle. He has lived a very long time. Surely he will know the answers I am looking for. Nick and I hiked up into the mountain where the old turtle lived all alone. When Nick and I arrived, he found Neo, Ginger, up the Ginger and Garden. The old the, the turtle was old and Ginger was hard for him. I have three questions and I came to ask your help, Nick and I said. When is the best time to do things? Who is the most important one? What is, what is the right thing to do? Neil listened carefully, but he only smiled. Then he went on with his ginger. <clears throat> you, you, know, you must be tired, Nicolai said at last. Let me help you. The turtle gave him his shovel and thanked him. And because it was, yeah, and because it was easier for a young boy to dig in it, uh, to dig to think that it was for an old turtle. Nick and I kept on digging until the rows were finished. But just as he finished, the, the wind blew wild, wildly, and rain burst from dodging canals as they moved toward the cottage for shelter. Nick and I suddenly heard a cry for help. Running down the path, he found a panda whose leg had been injured by a fallen tree. Carefully, Nick and I carried her into Neil's house and made a splint for her neck with a stick of bamboo. The storm rain started banging at the doors and windows. The panda woke up. Where am I? she said. And where is my child? The boy ran out of the cottage and down the down the path. The roar of the storm was defeat defeat defeating. Deafening. Oh deafening. Pushing against the howling wind and drenching rain, he went farther into the forest. There he found the panda's child, cold and shivering on the ground. Poor him. Get back to him. 
The panda, so, the little panda was wet and stand but alive. Nikolai carried her inside and made her warm and you know, made her warm and dry. Then he made her in her mother's arm. Neo smiled when he saw what the boy had done. The next morning, the sun was warm, birds, birds sang, and all was well. And all was well with the world. The panda's neck was hear me nicely, and she thanked Nikolai for saving her baby. <laughs> Thank Nick and I for saving her and her baby from the storm. At that moment, Sonia, Gogo, and Pushkin arrived to make sure everyone was all right. Nick and I felt great peace within himself. He had wonderful friends and he had saved the panda and her child, but he also felt disappointed. He still had not found the answers to his three questions, so he, yeah, so he asked Neil one more time. The old turtle looked at the boy, but your questions have been answered, he said. They have? asked the boy. Yesterday, if, if you had not stayed to help me think, my yesterday, if you had not stayed to help me dig my garden, you wouldn't have heard the parents' cries for help in the storm. Therefore, the most important time was the time you spent digging the garden. The most important one at that moment was me, and the most important thing to you was to help me with my garden. Later, when you found the injured panda, the most important time was the time you spent managing her nun and saving her child. The most important ones were the uh, 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 the most important ones were the panda and her baby, and the most important thing was thing to do was to take care of them and make them feel safe. And then we have the panda and the child. Yeah. Remember that there is only one important time, and that time is now. The most important one is always the one you are with, and the most important thing to no, important thing is to do good for the one who is standing at your side. For these, my dear boy, are the answers to what is most important in this world. This is why we're here. The end. When I first got to know Sam, Miguel, Sarah Grady, and the other UU youth, we were staring down myriad colors and flavors of donut assortments in downtown Amherst. Myself, youthful within our shared context, but not quite young, bypassed all the delightful treats for the usual coffee, black. Luckily for me, my colleagues had more creative taste. Cookies and cream donuts, maple and bacon donuts, birthday cake donuts. It was madness, really. We got back to the church and I drank my bitter coffee while eyeballing the donuts I chose not to get jealously up until the youth offered to share theirs with me. 
and they were absolutely delicious. As a current PhD student, my common company kept usually ranges from 25 to 35 workaholics that consistently drink too much bitter coffee. We often forget to let ourselves be whimsical and playful up until we reach a breakdown point of exhaustion or after indulging in too many adult beverages. We take the world very seriously and we often feel stuck in our path, blind to the other opportunities and possibilities that the simple reality of being alive affords. Having the privilege to share community with our youth this past year, listening to their belief statements, hearing them navigate big and small decisions in the context of the pandemic, listening to their own joys and sorrows, we call them roses and thorns, has meant getting to see the world as something still unfolding, still unknown, and still promising. And it is not that young folks have a monopoly on the joys and roses of things. If anything, they carry not only their own weights, but the weights that us older folk have failed to take responsibility for. But in their imagination, creativity, and fresh seen eyes, they show us new and better ways to balance that weight. So with that, thank you, Miguel, Sarah, Sam, Allie, and Grady for sharing your music, your books, your places, and your time with us today. Okay, so this is Teddy. Um, Teddy is probably my oldest friend. He has been with me through everything without me only during the day. We would go on fantastic adventures through wonderlands of dreams, exploring everything from sports to the highest mountains, having in-depth conversations. Teddy smells like home. He is the most matted fur thanks to always being played with in dollhouses, and being held while I fall asleep. Teddy is quite an enduring toy. As a kid, I would toss him, squeeze him, and even pull him, yet somehow he never fell apart. Teddy is cushioned with a slightly rounded belly. His eyes, never blinking, are always warm and understanding. Teddy's small mouth always seems to have a smile. Although I put him in the toy bin several years ago, Teddy will always be a good friend that I can return to for comfort. He will forever be a symbol of my childhood and good times. Teddy was the most irreplaceable toy I ever had. Um, hello, um, I'm Grady. Um, I'm still wearing uh, the necklace I made with your programs two years ago. Here, it's, it's this one here. Um, it's a river stone that I drilled a hole into with a piece of flint. Um, I wear it all the time because it reminds me of why I love the woods. For the last five years, I've attended a wilderness survival skills program run by the Wolf Tree programs called Tupelo. But most, most Saturdays of the year, I go into the woods, learning so much from fire skills to carving safety to how to play coyote deer. Um, this year, I am CIT, which means counselor in training. Um, and that means that I can help lead the group I'm in or like in the woods. Um, love being in this leadership role and I look forward to it every week. It's a really meaningful place for me. I've connected with people there and like on you know, the land that the place that it takes place on. Um, every year there has been an overnight at Tupelo. Um, we prepare in the weeks before and have a big potluck with all the kids' families that night. It's so much fun. We play night games, which have included like sneaking up on a fire in the dark or capturing glow sticks or finding a beating drum. Um, we stay up late and sleep outside in shelters we built with sticks and leaves. Uh, this year was different um, because of COVID-19, we couldn't do an overnight or have a potluck, but the counselor um, let, us, let us do an only CIT overnight. That happened last night. Um, we, it was like different than the other, no, other overnights I've done because, um, we kind of, we kind of prepared like ourselves instead of like Kevin, who's the counselor, like, like telling us what to do or like sending us like lists of things to bring. Like we kind of like decided what to bring ourselves or like we like, you know, chose what, um, chose like what to do instead of like there being a strict I mean, like, there's a really structure. Instead of like Kevin, you know, like choosing 
like our activities we were like doing the activities ourselves and um yeah it was it was really fun we uh it's just it's like it's the the land is just so like different in the dark it's like it's like a completely like diff like you like think you know everywhere but then it's like it's like night and then it becomes night and then you're like I have no clue where I am this is like so cool um it was just like yeah it was just really like meaningful and like like just such a like good like fun and like good experience for me to like have and do Hi, I'm Sarah. The object I chose was this painting I made of the Quabbin Reservoir, which is also behind me. Um, I chose this painting because it represents um, two things that are important to me, both art and painting, and uh, nature. And art is important to me because um, it allows me to be creative and is a fun and calming thing to do, um, and nature is important to me because um, it's really good to get outside um, and come on these walks to the Quabbin and other places um, and get some fresh air and exercise and see the nature and the nice views. <laughs> um, and uh, so I made this painting in the past year, and this past year, um, both art and nature have been especially important because I have been in my room, and it has been important to have some time to be creative and also have time to get outside when I'm inside most of the day. Okay. Hi, I'm Sarah, and this is Allie. We will be playing the first movement of Sonata in C major for two cellos by Broccherini. Mm -hmm. 